Hey there, everybody. This is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and I'm looking at another game coming to Kickstarter soon. This is The Red Burnoose, a fully cooperative deck building war game for one to four players, which is pretty cool. We don't get too many co-op war games that I can cover. I'm going to do a quick overview of how the game plays, and then I'm going to do an entire two-handed playthrough. So this will show what the game would play like with two players co-op. And finally, I'll end up with my impressions and thoughts on the game and use the chapters to skip to any part of that if you want to see them quickly. And if you like the content on the One Stop Co-op Shop, don't forget forget you can support us through Patreon. We have a Discord, a great community if you want to have some fun conversations about games. And we have a streaming channel and a weekly podcast. Check them all out. So the Red Bernoulli models a period in history that I didn't know anything about, which is when the French troops were invading Algeria. And you have these three separate French armies. And you don't know where they're going at the start of the game because they each have a spawn location listed on their opposite side, but you shuffle them up so you don't know who's coming out first. And depicted on the board, you have all these little movement spots and you've got these villages, which is what you are defending. And depending on player count, the villages are divided differently for a two player game. One player controls all of these sort of reddish brown villages up here, plus this one blue one. And the second player controls kind of all the southern stuff. I've marked that this village here is already taken by the French, so it is not counted for anything. And besides the villages themselves, you'll see some symbols on the board. These are used for tiebreakers and army movement. Like when an army reaches right here, the next card, whether it shows a circle or a triangle, will determine which way they go, which could determine which city they attack, what you need to defend. And these villages and the armies are your failure conditions. If an army gets in and takes a village, you can either retreat once per game or the village can be overtaken. And in that case, the player controlling that whole set of villages is out of the game. Because historically, once the French conquered some villages, for a given group, that group would then join them and they would fight against the other groups. So you lose the game if two players are eliminated, which since I'm playing two player would make sense, but even with three or four players, still two players would be the max that could be eliminated. Or if one player is eliminated and you've used what's called the retreat token, which is a one-time second chance for a player, letting them abandon a village and try to fight back in the next village. Now, as for the victory condition, you've got this deck of Automa cards. They're going to determine how many units spawn for the French armies. They have the tiebreaker I mentioned. They'll sometimes have other effects. And if the players can survive through this entire deck, that means the French army has lost their will to fight and you survive. And by the way, because two players are a bit tougher, I have removed a few cards at random. That's the only player count you do that at. Now, as for the players themselves, they have some village cards representing the villages under their control. And each player has a starting deck of cards because this is a deck builder. You're going to draw five cards at a time. And each card generally has an effect you can discard it for to resolve and you can do up to three actions in a turn. Playing a card is one action. You can place a card under one of your villages to save it for a future turn or to kind of call it out of your deck. That's an action. And finally, once you start having some cubes, some army units on the board, you can use actions to move them around within your villages. But at the end of each round, you get to the deck building portion. You'll see some icons on the right middle of each card and any cards you didn't play, the cards that remain in your hand, and you can stop playing actions whenever you want to keep more. These become your purchasing power. So like here I would have, this is influence, uh, two, four, six influence and three military power. And there's a consistent offer of eight cards and the bottom shows what the cost is to buy the given card. You can buy up to two cards at the end of each of your turns. So here I had six influence and some military power. It looks like the best I could do would probably be an olive orchard. See, it costs five influence and in the future it'll give me food, which lets me hire some more military units or I could discard it to draw two cards. Whatever you buy goes in your discard pile, so does your entire hand. You draw back up to five cards and you draw an Automa card after every set of player turns. In two player, like I'll be playing, both players go and then an Automa card is drawn. You add some units to the armies and you move every army one space towards the closest village, which only happens once they've deployed. You'll see that each army has a deployment value, like army number one is the first one that'll come out and it says deploys when six or more units are present. And that's honestly mostly it, except once an army actually gets to a village, you have combat, you have different colored dice, each a die value based on the type of unit. The color is going to cause zero up to two hits, and that removes just units from the other side. And each army, like their deploy value, also has a retreat value. So once they're down to two or fewer units for army one, for example, they run away again, they go off the board, and they'll start building up units again until they can eventually deploy. And that's kind of the cat and mouse dance you do until you either survive or are conquered too much. All right, so those are the basics. I'll get into more details as we play, but let's 
jump into our playthrough of the Red Bernoose. So as I mentioned in the overview, each player has cards for the villages they control, and many of them have bonuses for certain types of combat, like this is a wooded village, so you gain rerolls for free. And additionally, some villages will give their controlling player a bonus at the start of game, so here I get three reroll tokens. As you might imagine, these can be used during combat to reroll dice you don't like for you or for the French. And some villages also change up your starting deck, like this player on the left is going to start with one market. Additionally, you have this assortment of heroes. Each player is going to take two at random and pick one. So here I've got Fatma. She was historically one of the leaders of this fight against the French, a female soldier and leader. And okay, let's see. So the leaders have resources just like everybody else. This one has three military and one weapon. That'll make it much easier to recruit some tough soldiers, sharpshooters especially. Let's see, this guy can ambush well and gives me one Mujahideen, one of the kind of basic soldiers for free. But Fatma is also a good fighter and gives me two of them for free. So yeah, let's uh, start with her. I like her a lot. And as her card said, this again changes my starting deck. I get two Mujahideen cards to start. And a few of the cards you can buy from the market, the military cards will have this little deployment icon. I've got two of these guys, which means I get two white Mujahideen cubes to place in any of the four villages I control. Now see this one, there's basically no chance the French are going to come to it. But a French army might deploy over here and then come that way or over here. So for now, I'll split them between the two villages that would be closest to initial French deployment points. Because remember, I know Army 1 is going to come out first, but I don't know where they're going to come from. Now, Player 2 is going to do the same thing. He also starts with a market plus a fig orchard. So he's got way more food production in his deck right off the bat. And we got to pick Player 2's leader. Oh, we got Dueling Omar is going on. So let's see. This one is slightly better resources, although three military powers, nothing to sneeze at. And they can both be placed on the board by discarding the card. Ooh, this guy places defenses in villages, which makes it much tougher for the French to come in. He can also fight. Oh, but this guy works as a sharpshooter, one of the best units in the game for us, and gives me a free tools card. Ooh, that is pretty tough. Uh, let's go for this guy. And that gets us a tools card as well. We'll see what all that does in a second. And finally, the finished setup, and then we'll get to the actual playthrough. We're going to spawn two cards worth for the Automa. We ignore the bottom text. We ignore this. We're just looking at this. So they're going to get two Carabiniers, their basic soldiers in Army 1, and then two Sappers and another basic soldier. So it'll be three soldiers, two Sappers. And they all go in Army 1 until Army 1 has deployed, and then new units will start getting added to Army 2 until it deploys. So we are at five units here right now. The blues are the basic soldiers, the orange are the sappers. Once we get to six or more, they'll deploy. All right, so here we go into the first turn for the player on the left. Let's go through their card effects. So you already saw Fatma, their leader, but you can discard this card to place her on the board, and she can fight. Alternatively, I can put her under a village card, remember that's one of my three actions, and that will get us a reroll token. And that's about it, so I can get her out on the board or save her for her purchasing power. The man, you have a few cards like this in your starting deck. Let's you move one of the basic units, sharpshooters, from your territory to another village. And this is important, you have the man and the young man who do this, because those cards are the only way to move units from one player to another. So let's say that we find out that Army 1 is actually heading toward Player 2's territory. Boom, we can play one of those cards to get a unit from Player 1 to Player 2 and help them survive. The youth is great for a bit of milling. When placed in a village, you draw three cards, keep one and discard the others. And I said it was one action to place a card in a village and get its village effect if it has one. It's also one card to take all the cards from a given village and put them back in your hand. So you can kind of like call or build up cards and then like get big combo turns, however you want to do it with that uh, action mechanic. Okay, the artisan gives me one tool, which will increase my buying power. And if you play him with a tools card, you gain an extra three influence for purchasing that turn. And the young man I already mentioned, he lets you move Mujahideen units instead of sharpshooters, which is the man's purview. And let's see, looking at our resources, we've got two, four, six, eight influence, one, three, four, five military power, and one tool, but no food. And for five influence and one tool, we could buy weapons, which will let us conduct ambushes with Mujahideen or sharpshooters. Now, if we had just one food, we could get another Mujahideen soldier because they need four influence, four military, and one food, but we didn't get our one food card which actually makes me think I should probably buy an olive orchard or a fig orchard because in your starting deck, there's literally only a single person with food. So it's very, very tough to build up some bigger military presence until you bolster up your food. Uh, defenses are super expensive. We're not going to worry about that. You need eight influence and two food. Tools are nice. They let you dig down through your deck until you get a food card. Market, we started with one. It lets you trade weapons and tools and food interchangeably. So then like I could buy a Mujahideen this turn. You know what, we've got this youth literally giving us nothing in terms of purchasing power, so might as well put him in a village to draw three cards and keep one. Maybe we'll get our food that way. 
And honestly, it doesn't really matter much which village card you put them under, because it's not like they're actually tied to that location except for a couple cards. Except that for one action, I can pull up every card back to my hand. So sometimes you want to put like a bunch of people under one village. Sometimes you want to spread them out so you don't get the cards you were like trying to cull back in. So three cards, I keep one. Young woman gives me some influence. I can put her in a village to get me reroll token. The young man you already saw. An elderly man also gives me a way to get reroll tokens. So none of these are food. None of these are great. I think I might actually get the young woman because her ability isn't that great. Her resources aren't that great. I might just kind of cull her out of my deck. These other two get discarded. So that was one action to play the young man. I'm going to play the young woman into a different village because, again, I don't really want to get her back. That'll give me one reroll token, so I'll have four. And I get a third action. If I don't play Fatma, I'll have eight influence, so I can get the Fig Orchard, which has two food. But if I do play Fatma, I can get another unit on the board. Although, remember, this is the deck that started with two Mujahideen cards. So maybe I want to buy a weapon, not an Orchard, because then I can start doing ambushes pretty quickly. See, I'm going to play Fatma down on the board. And here she is, my little red leader, and I can put her into any village. It doesn't have to be my own, but I'm going to put her in a village with one of these units, and we'll be able to ambush with both of them soon. You'll see what that looks like. All right, that was three actions. We've got, as I said, two, four, six influence and one tool. And although I do want to get some orchards at some point, I don't want to waste the tool. For five influence and one tool, I can get a weapon, which I can play into villages to get a reroll token. But the big thing is you'll see that you can play it with Mujahideen and Sharpshooters to do ambushes and get some early attacks off on armies before they reach your villages. Okay, everything's discarded, including the card I bought. And I draw five more cards. And well, I got both my Mujahideen, but still not my food card. But I'll be able to dig down to get that food with my youth card again in a moment. All right, let's see what player two's got. And then we're going to find out where army one is popping up. Got the elderly man that can get us a reroll token, but not too much otherwise. Woman can get us a non-movable troop. Basically, when you play them into a village, you add this little red cube. It's a female soldier unit, but they can't move or ambush. We got a market that can trade things out. And here's the elderly woman that I was looking for, the one food. Plus Omar, who can go down as a sharp shooter. Pretty good unit. So we sadly don't have quite enough influence to get a Mujahideen. We don't have enough military power to get a sharpshooter. Honestly, I think our resources are weak enough. I'm going to spend most of my actions this turn just saving people for next turn to pull them back up. So to that end, first let's pay Omar to get his unit down. And of their four towns, these two are right next to this spot. And this one's one of the possible ones. Well, for now, let's start defending over here. We can always move Omar later. Let's see, for two more actions, I want to hang on to the elderly woman in case I don't draw the rest of my food. I'll just put her wherever. And I can take any one card from the village I put her into and take it back into my hand. No thanks. And uh, let's see, to get more influence, I try to get more military power. Well, the nice thing about putting down the woman is I get another soldier. So yeah, let's put them both into Akbil which adds one of these red immobile unit cubes there. Now, the thing about these is they're very limited. You only have two per player in the entire game. So this is one of the four. And if they never go towards there, maybe that's a waste. Uh, well, whatever. <laughs> we'll just hope that an army heads there eventually. And all that's left is an elderly man in a market, not enough to buy anything, but hopefully next turn will be better. Player two's getting his tools to dig for food and the artisans. So we got a ton of tools. We can probably get some weapons like the other player did. A child, a youth. And a fig orchard with a ton of food. Darn it. <laughs> so I might just uh, save some stuff up to make a big purchase again later because now I don't have the military power to get a unit. Ah. Okay, and here's our first Automa card. And it's two Carabiniers to Army 1. Oh, and an artillery there as well. I was happy with just the soldiers. I didn't need the uh, cannons as well. So they are at eight units, which is equal to or more than their deploy value of six. So they are going to come out and then move. Where are they? All the way up here, which is potentially good. We've got one of the two villages they can go to. Yeah, show it better here or here, because they're not going to go there. That's the village that isn't used in two-player games. So they're either going to head that way or that way. It'll depend on whether they get a circle or a triangle card on the turn that they're making that move. But if they go that way, I have it somewhat defended. All right, and then they do move one space this turn as well. All right, back to player one. I should definitely be able to get some units this turn. I've got the young woman and the youth sitting there in case I need to draw some more cards. I know I definitely do because I have a ton of military power and influence, but no food. So let's use my first action to get my youth back. Let's use my second action to put him right back where he was. That let me look at my last three cards. And there it is, the elderly woman we wanted for her one food. Boom. And that leaves me with one action left. Let's see what I've got. Two, four, six, eight, nine influence and two, six, ten military power. Oh, I'm sorry, 11 influence. I missed two. So I can use one of my two influence people like the woman or the child. Let's see, I could do the woman, but again, I'm worried about committing too many of my red units before I actually know where they're going to go. So let's put the child down. I can either draw two cards or move one card from that village to any other village. 
I think it makes sense to put him with the youth. That way, if I need a lot of card draw, I can get them both. So I'm going to draw two cards, which means I have to reshuffle. I hope I don't get anything I really needed. A uh, young man and a man. Man, I have a lot of resources. Probably too much. Yeah, so let's see. One, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen influence. Uh, one food, that's good. And two, four, eight, nine, thirteen military power. And now without weapons, I can't get a sharpshooter, but I can definitely get a Mujahideen because I do have one food. That's four influence, four military power. So I'll still have a ton of influence and military power left, but without food, I can't do much. So I think for the second one, I'll get a whole bunch of food and get a fig orchard. So that's two purchases. And because of this little deployment, I kind of get to put down a Mujahideen fighter. I guess until I know more, I'll keep bolstering this place in case the Altama comes that way. Um, for next turn, this looks pretty good. I can probably get some weapons or use the market to change my artisan's tool into some food and get some Mujahideen, maybe. We'll see how it goes. All right, but how about you, player two? For one action, we can get these back. And it looks like we... Oh, no, we don't need the food because we have the fig orchard. Yeah, neither of them has military power, so darn, I probably should have saved the elderly man that had some. Although even then, I wouldn't have had enough. Darn. So I can use a youth to draw some more. Yeah, let's do that first. That's a zero card. I'm going to put it in a different village, I think. So I get to draw three and to keep one. Young man, not enough military. Dang it, man. I still can't get above two military powers. So which of these do I want? I guess young woman getting me a reroll token because I don't really have many of those. So probably the best I can do with uh, six influence and a tool is to get a weapon. And then I'll have to actually get some units to use them with later. Okay, so my second action, I think I'll put down a child to draw two more cards. Let's split where it goes. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Here we go. Now we got some military power. Four influence, four military power. That brings us to six, eight uh, influence, five military power. We got the food, so we can definitely get at least one Mujahideen. Although, sadly, we are one influence shy of getting a weapon, too. So with that in mind, I'll go ahead and put down my young woman over here, get a reroll. This will be their first one, so starting to build some up. And that leaves us with six influence, five military power, two food. So that's a little bit more than we need to get their first Mujahideen soldier. We'll work on weapons next. And until we know which way the army is going, it looks like this is a good village to protect because that's uh, one of the two ways they might head. But we're looking good for next turn. Can definitely get some weapons or another Mujahideen. Maybe both. We'll see. But for our new Atama card. Ooh, nice. We're going to add only two units to army two. Army one can't be added to now that it's deployed. And then a cannon to army three. And Army 2 needs 8 or more units to deploy, so definitely like them playing slowly. And then Army 1 gets one closer. We're still not sure which way they're going to go. We're going to have to wait a couple more cards. All right, back to Player 1. Uh, Fatma's already down, although we could move her, but we're not sure which way she needs to go yet. Resource-wise, we've got 2, 4, 6 influence, 1, 3, 4 military power. So we have barely enough to get another Mujahideen fighter. Although we don't have food, but I could play the market, which lets me change tools, weapons, and food interchangeably. And then the artisan's tool could become the food I need to hire. Awesome. Although sadly, the only card I definitely don't need is the woman, but I don't want to put down another one of those red units until I see where the army's going. I could use an action to pull back my child and youth and then play them both out and draw some more. Um, I could get my young woman back and get another reroll. Maybe that's not such a bad card to recur over and over. Yeah, you know what? Let's do that first. So one, two actions. I'll pull her back and then play her in there again to get a fifth reroll. And then I think I'll just skip my third action for now. And I'll buy the one Mujahideen I can afford and just keep boosting this village until I find out I got to move elsewhere. And we got some weapons for next turn, but no Mujahideen to ambush with them yet. So we'll probably save that and wait. And as for player two, let's see. I wanted to try to get another soldier as well as some weapons. So that would be nine influence, two, four, six influence. I've definitely got the military power. I've definitely got the food. I've got the tool. So I need to get three more influence. So now I'm wishing I had put the child and the youth together. Let me go ahead and spend my first action to get the child, put him with the youth to draw two cards. Come on, give me three influence. Oh, and yes, they do. Awesome. I got a man and an artisan. I think I now have more than I need. Are there any of these I want to stow? Two, four, six, eight, ten. So I can't get rid of any of my influence cards. I guess I could stow the tools. Yeah, I mean, that seems to make sense because I don't really want them except on turns I'm going to buy weapons or when I need to dig for food. So let's put that in my fourth village. There we go. Lots of stuff called out. And like I said, I've got six, eight, ten influence, a bunch of military power, two food. And with the artisan's tool, I can get weapons and Mujahideen to use them. And again, until I hear different, we'll keep bulking up over here. Definitely need to get this side more rerolls, though. I'd be kind of terrified to do an ambush with them, potentially lose my units. There we go for next turn. All right, let's see. Ooh, four more units for Army 2. They are only two away from deploying. That's not great. I really wanted to get Army 1's huge force under control before Army 2 came out, but we won't have such luck. 
Speaking at Army One, they're at the crossroads. We will find out next round after we both play which way they're going. And okay, coming back around to here, we have four military power, so that would be enough for a Mujahideen. But the big thing is I want to put these weapons into storage because you need to combo these with a unit card to actually get an ambush off. It says when placing a village with a Mujahidate, the red cubes gain one reroll token. Oh, and I don't have any villages with them yet. Darn it. Well, let's see. I'll put this in a separate village because I don't have enough actions to pull it and ambush and do everything else too. So it's left as a young man and a man, which could move my units around, but we don't know where the army's going yet, so I don't want to do that. We've got six influence, four military power, and some food. So I could get another weapon. I could get another Mujahideen. I think Mujahideen is going to be more important first. So sure, let's just stop doing actions and get another soldier. There we go. I feel like a bit of a broken record, but don't forget we can use some of our actions just to move these guys within our own villages. So it's not like we're committed to them being there forever. Ooh, and a great draw for next turn. We've got a young man in case the army heads the other way to send one of our soldiers to our friend. We've got a Mujahideen with the weapon we save to do an ambush. Lots of cool stuff we can do. All right, how about you, player two? We could move this guy, but we're still not sure where the enemy's coming. Maybe we should save him for later. Resource-wise, though, we can almost get a sharpshooter. We need six military power. We've got that, Ooh, but a weapon and a food. The market could change things, but the only card we have that gives us either of those is the elderly woman. So we can hold off on that for now. I'm going to spend one action to pull up my elderly woman and my woman. That'll get me a food to buy another fighter. And I think I'm going to play my elderly man onto this village. Because since it contains at least one troop, that'll get us a reroll. And then let's see, I have a third action. And I think I have more influence than I need. Three, five, seven. Yeah, so I could put one of the women back into a village to get another red unit. But again, I'm kind of worried to do that in case I just commit them to the wrong place. I wish I didn't need Omar's three military to buy a unit this turn, or I would use him and move him to a different village. But I'm just going to stop without using my third action. That gives me enough to buy a Mujahideen, although note that there are only five of these cards per player in the game, so there are only two more for us to buy. Then it'll all be about getting sharpshooters and using the units we have. And we're literally about to find out which way these guys are going. We've got three units here now to help stop them. And here we go, here we go. Big moment of truth here. Four units, Army 2 is coming out, and they're going to go down red. Ah, that's the better one we wanted. Good. First, oh my gosh, ten of those guys, and they're going... Oof, up here we have basically nobody guarding anything. And Army 1, remember that we had the red circle, so they are heading up here. Uh, player 1 needs to book it to get some defenses thrown together. And these guys can, for now, pretty much be moved by Player 2 wherever, because that army's not coming here anytime soon. All right, so Player 1, Player 1, where's our weapon? We want to pull that off and do an ambush. There we go, so first action, ambush. Second action, you'll see the units all save us. Discard with a weapon card to ambush any French units on a path leading to a village you control. We need to discard with the weapon. So that's two actions. We'll remember that we have one more, and we can pick any units from one village. They can go to attack any army as long as enough to pass through another player's village. So here they're going to ambush them, and white cubes tend to hit slightly more often. I'm not going to bring all five, because that means we take more attacks and retaliation, so I'm just going to do these four. And ambushes use a simplified form of combat. You basically just have one round of you shooting, their losses are discarded, and then you have a round of them returning fire. And I'm just attacking with Mujahideen, which are white. You'll see that they hit on a four, five, or six, one damage, whatever they get. So we're hoping for some high numbers here. Ooh, that was pretty good. Three units defeated. And in regular combat, when they attack the village, there is an order in which units are removed. But here I'm just going to attack these three blue guys because the sappers actually don't fight normally. They just overcome defenses and I don't even have any. And the artillery is nasty, but it only gets one shot the entire battle. And then it kind of goes down to the regular attack. So I think this is looking good. Now the French get to return fire in an ambush after they've suffered their losses with the lower number of the number of combat units they have, which is three or half rounded up of the units I brought. That's why I didn't bring my red leader. So I have four units. They're going to get to attack with two attackers. And they use the combat order you see here, which is also the order they removed. So if they were cavalry, they would attack then carabiniers. And they've got two of them. And just like my basic units, they hit on a four, five, or six. Ouch. This player has a bunch of rerolls. Yeah, let's reroll that six. Come on, 50-50 shot that nothing happens. Beautiful. So my ambushers fade away again with no casualties. And I can put them in any city I want, but obviously <laughs> they're going right there because there's about to be some battle. And I've got one action left, and I think that's pretty obvious. Let's get another unit in here from over there. Although sadly, I just realized I can't really buy much of anything, can I? I've got two, four influence, seven military, but no food and nothing for my market to convert. I literally can't buy any cards. Maybe I shouldn't have used my last action to move that troop or whatever. So five more, and before we get to use these cards, we will have our big battle. But player two goes first. Whoops, forgot to draw for them. Yes, yes, we got a young man. That's what I was really hoping. We'll be able to move one of our units to help out player one. 
So let's do that first, no question. We can move any one Mujahideen to a player one's territory. And when we do that, we can move any one card from our discard pile to the top of our deck, but they don't have a discard pile right now. Player two just reshuffled their deck. All right now let's say, ooh, I don't have any food, which means I can't buy any units. But I do have two actions left. I could pull up my tools and then use their ability. Yeah, let's do that. So I'm going to pull my tools back. And for my third action, I'm going to discard them. I reveal cards until I get a food card uh, added to my hand and discard the other revealed cards. So where is some food market leader? Okay, elderly woman. Oh, man, that means my leader is gone. Sorry. If we stop there. We've got two, four, six, eight, nine influence. Wow. Uh, six, seven military power and a tool and a food. Ooh, that means I have enough to do my little one-two combo again. Get a Mujahideen and a weapon. And this time we're clearly going to put our soldiers here because we know Army 1's not coming that way, but Army 2 absolutely might. Speaking of the armies, here we go. Oh, oh man. So no new units for Army 3, but move all armies one additional time with red being the tiebreaker. So it's not going to matter for Army 2 at all. They're just getting closer. Next turn, we'll find out which way they're going. We don't have almost any defenses, but Army 1, I mean, they can't move twice. They're just going to go into battle. But I'm actually feeling pretty darn good about our chances here. We outnumber them by quite a bit. Because remember, the orange guys, the sappers, they help to get rid of defenses if I built them. But I haven't, so they don't really do much of anything. And also remember, most villages have some kind of terrain effect. This one is sheltered. Artillery rolls, that's their one black cube, are decreased by one. So they would have to roll a six, a double hit to do anything. And both artillery and my best unit sharpshooters only shoot at the beginning of combat. And then it becomes kind of a simultaneous melee between the regular other units. So here we go, artillery, they just need a six. You are kidding me, I'm using a reroll. No, sir, there we go, that's better. And then we're doing all of this. Uh, I've got a red for my leader. She fights as one of the female soldiers. I've got six of my regular soldiers, two of theirs. Remember, we want fives and sixes. Yes. <laughs> so that's three hits for me, none for them. And the order is Carabiniers first, then artillery and sappers last. But with only two units left, that is Army 1's retreat value. So they get out of dodge at the end of that battle. They run back to their little army thing. And we're going to start adding units to army one again, not army three. You always go the lowest army that is not deployed until they get six or more and they'll come back out. And we'll wait again to see which way they go when they reach the crossroads here. So now we got to totally shift gears and try to get ready for army two, which is gigantic. I'm really worried about them. So to that end, player one, what do you want to do? I'd love to get some more weapons so I can hire some sharpshooters and do more ambushes. But as it is, wow, I have no food, do I? Plus two, action one, grab our child and youth. Um, action two, we'll go ahead and do the child first to get two cards, which is a woman and an elderly woman. There we go, one food, nice. And then I guess I'll play the youth to draw three cards and keep one. It's a low chance, but I would love to get my weapons card. Mujahideen, Mujahideen, Fig Orchard. Huh. So with the Fig Orchard, I would have enough food to get two Mujahideen fighters. But I don't really want that, do I? And darn, I don't have any way to get tools to get weapons. Yeah, I don't want to steal the last two Mujahideen because then I'd have to send them all to player two. So let's uh, go ahead and take one of those. Or actually, wait, maybe I can get some defenses. Maybe I will get the Fig Orchard. So how much influence do I have? One, three, five, seven, nine, eleven. Oh man, is it really eleven? Oh wait, I forgot about Fatma. So two, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen. Awesome, perfect. So I'm going to get one of the two last. Oh wait, that is the last Mujahideen? Oh well. But then with my extra two food and eight influence, I'm going to get a defense. I place a defense marker in any of my villages. And then for its ability while it's in my hand, I can discard this card and up to two others and draw one card for each card discarded. But when I build it, I get the defense. And unless the French have sappers, that's basically just going to take away some of their units when they attack. So I'll put it in Mechla for now. And I also got a Mujahideen. Let's throw them there. But that is the last Mujahideen we can buy. All the rest is going to be moving them around the board and hopefully getting some sharpshooters too. All right, how about you, player two? We got to get some stuff going on. We could do an ambush, or instead I could buy a sharpshooter, huh? I mean, one nice thing about the ambush is I could take the two soldiers from here, have them attack army two, and then have them pop up over here, so I'd kind of save a bunch of actions. But I love the idea of getting some sharpshooters and building up my army more. So let's go for that. For sharpshooters, you need six military. I'll have that with the two Mujahideen easily. I need a weapon, I need a food, so I don't need this woman. Let's play her down. And actually, before we do, let's pull up this young woman and then we'll play them both in here. So I'll get a Mujahidate and a reroll token. So here we go. If they come that way, I got a little bit more. With all my stuff left over, I'll get my first sharpshooter. They hit even better than my regular units, but the one big negative is you only get one shot at the beginning of a regular battle. So they're really best in ambushing, which I don't think I'll have time to make happen here. Unless I draw one of my weapons now, no such luck. All right, now we get to find out which way Army 2 is going. 
Oh, and Army 1 is coming out again at 2, 4 units. Ah! Now, the good thing is with these sappers kind of taking up space, Army 1 is going to be pretty weak. So I'm not really worried about them. Army 2 is going triangle. Man, Player 1 is taking all the attacks. we got to get some people over there. Yeah, so Player 1 has a lot of interesting cards in their hand, but it doesn't matter too much. Because I think I'm just going to go 1, 2, 3 and get all those guys on top. That is still not nearly enough. Hopefully, Player 2 can get one or two people over there. This is kind of a bummer. Without tools or food, I can't really get much of anything. Even though I have two, four, six, eight influence and a ton of military power. The only thing you can buy without food or anything else is orchard. Should I buy an olive orchard and be able to draw some cards? Yeah, sure. I'll just get one olive orchard. I don't want to fill up my deck with too many food things. And how about player two? Wonderful. <laughs> I just realized we have nothing that can move somebody to another player. Oh, actually, I can play Omar to move him somewhere. Because leaders don't really care. Now, unfortunately, he's a sharpshooter, so he's just going to get one shot, but it might be a shot that takes out one of their units. What am I going to do for my second action? Huh. Let's see. I could get another sharpshooter if I draw the right stuff. So let's go ahead and pull up, I guess, these three cards. And then for my third action, I'll play the youth, draw three, and keep one. Try to get, like, a weapon or something. Weapon or a market, I think either one would work. Ooh, there we go. Weapon. So with all that, I should have way more than enough to get a sharpshooter. Need six military power, weapon, and food. Yeah, I've got four, five, seven military power. Awesome. Weapon and one food. Actually, can I get another weapon? Yeah, easily. Two, four, six influence and a tool from the artisan. So here we go. Both of those. I'm setting myself up for some nice sharpshooter raids later. Now, where should this guy go? I guess here now, right? Because Army 1 might head that way this time. But dang it, I was barely able to help player one. That's not ideal. All right, let's see what's happening here. Two cavalry, four army, three, because the rest are deployed. Oh, each must destroy an orchard if possible. Yuck. So army three is three away from deploying, although we're going to either kill or be killed by army two here. So I guess they won't deploy anytime soon. And it says each player has to get rid of an orchard. The French have built it. I guess I'll get rid of the olive orchard, right? It's less expensive. But player two just has the one fig orchard, so we'll have to try to rebuild that. Okay, then army one moves, and I forgot, I looked up the rules, defenses are better than I remembered. If they have sappers, you just remove one sapper for each defense, and then they charge in. But if they don't have sappers, you just remove the defense, they lose one unit per defense, and they don't move in this turn. So I get a whole other turn to prepare there. That takes away one of their nine monsters. Okay. But I like the time we've got. Okay, okay, so I've got a weapon, I've got a Mujahideen. Seems like I should probably do an ambush here. But I can also just spend some time moving my units to where the army is. But yeah, let's do the ambush. Let's do the ambush first. So I could have these four ambush, and then they would just end up there. That's probably the best way to do it, right? Even though the sharpshooter is a better ambusher, yeah, I think I have to do this. So it's going to be four units. They'll get to roll two dice against me. But first, let's see how I do. That seems pretty good. That's two hits. Darn, both of these were low. Reds uh, do two damage on a six and one damage on a five. So two guys gone, and then because of the size of my force, they get to roll two responses. Please no, please no. Oof, oof. It's two hits. Uh, let's at least use one reroll. Try to lower it down. Okay, one hit. I can take that. Although I have to use the order of attack for their response, which means I'll have to lose a Mujahideen. I can never get them back. Okay, I got two rerolls left. <laughs> what the hey? Let's go for another one. Yes. So we retreat back and we now outnumber them barely. Gosh, what do I do with my last two actions? Maybe pull up the young woman and play her again to get another reroll back. I think that might be my best option. But it does mean I can't buy a darn thing with the stuff I have left. That's okay. That's okay. We'll just hope we survive. All right, how about over here for player two? Ooh, they can do their own ambush, but sadly, they still didn't get anybody to send to people to help out player one. Yeah, I mean, I could get another sharpshooter, but no. Let's ambush, ambush with the weapon of Mujahideen. And the key thing is you can't ambush once they're past a village you control, but clearly uh, I can go through here. And yeah, I'm going to choose the guys that they passed by. I can't bring the red, but the sharpshooter and the regular soldier. Go get them, guys. Sharpshooter hit on a two plus. Awesome. That is two more hits. We've cut them down to five guys. Two more losses and they'll retreat. Because I only brought two units, they only get one response, and it's a miss. Awesome. And I can return them to any one village. Here we go. In case Army 1 heads that way, we are ready for them, I think. All right, so that was one action. I'd like to save up some military power and food to hopefully get another sharpshooter. So let's go ahead and put both these cards under a village for my second and third action. Just get rid of the market. And there is our first sharpshooter card. That does the same as Mujahideen. Just lets you uh, do an ambush with a weapon. And there's a tool to maybe buy another weapon. We'll see how it goes. All right, French are getting down. They only have seven cards left. Oof, but they're destroying another orchard. Our food is going to go away. And two more cavalry. I'm okay with that. In fact, what am I saying? That is beautiful because that means Army 3 is still not deploying. And since Army 2 is about to get their butt kicked, hopefully, they won't deploy for a while. We do have to lose Player 1's fig orchard. I don't think they have any left. And Player 2 is definitely out, which means food is going to be kind of a problem. But since we can only buy sharpshooters and defenses with it, I think we'll be okay. 
All right, Army 1 moves here, and Army 2 is coming in. Uh-oh. So remember, Army 2 is just five blues. And that means the only pre-combat attack we have is the sharpshooter. It needs a three or more. Beautiful, down to four. And now it'll all be simultaneous. And yeah, I got a lot of guys. Come on, let's just wipe them out. Even if we take some casualties, let's just destroy them so they never even get the chance to deploy again. Okay, they got one hit. And my red missed. I got one. Yeah, two, three, four, baby. I've got two rerolls left, but I'm actually not going to use them. I'm okay with one of my regular soldiers being gone forever, but Army 2 is wiped out. They will have to take forever to redeploy. Might not even happen this game. And I'm really, really hoping. <laughs> Do me a favor, guys. If Army 2 goes south to where Player 2 has been building up, we might have a very easy battle. It's already a weak army. If they go north, we'll have to reposition a bunch. All right, well, I've got to say, that was pretty awesome. That was pretty awesome. And, you know, I think I'm going to go ahead and use a young man to move one of my Mujahideen down to Player 2's army. So I'll just kind of reshuffle where that guy is. And that lets me put one card of my choice from my discard pile on top of my deck. Heck yeah, weapons. And actually, yeah, with that weapon there, just to make sure we can attack with it next turn, let's go ahead and put our Mujahideen into a city. And then what the hell? I don't think I'm buying anything this turn. Well, I guess I could get an Olive Orchard with five influence. So sure, I'll stop there and buy an Olive Orchard instead of putting a female unit out. We have guaranteed with the weapon on top. Oh, I guess I didn't need to save that Mujahideen because there's some more. I'll be able to do an ambush next turn. All right, over to player two. I can't do an ambush with the sharpshooter. I could move some people around, but I don't know which way army two is going. So here, honestly, I just want to buy some more food so I can get sharpshooters, maybe save my tool, or maybe get a weapon. So sure, let's stow my sharpshooter card because it's not really doing anything until I have a weapon. I don't have that many in my deck. That's one action. And then I'm going to let the rest lie and use my six influence and one tool to buy another weapon card. So I have more in this deck overall. Now we'll find out what Army 1 is doing. First, Army 2 is adding a sapper and two regular units. I mean, they're still five away from redeploying. That feels pretty good. And yes, 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 we got the triangle. That means Player 2 is set up with their big army to blast Army 1 in the face. And gosh, they only have four regular units. The sappers aren't going to do a dang thing. The sharpshooters will probably cut out half of them in the first volley. <laughs> You're going down, buddies. Yeah, I think I'm actually feeling pretty good here. I don't really think we're going to lose. I could even do another ambush, couldn't I? Although I could get a sharpshooter. Which one do I want to do? I'm pretty sure Army 2 will be okay. In fact, they've got the tools to do an ambush of their own. So yeah, I'm going to save it for a sharpshooter. So I want all four of these for a sharpshooter, which means uh, the defense, I can discard this and up to two others and draw a replacement. Okay, so first action, I'll just replace it. Well, that was nothing. And you know what? I'm just going to stow Mujahideen. I don't need that many for a second and we'll stay there. We have enough. We'll buy a sharpshooter and done. And Army 1's going to probably be coming back pretty soon, so let's go ahead and put this here. Meanwhile, Player 2, yes, 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 we will be doing the Mujahideen and the weapons to attack. Gosh, should we just bring them all and try to wipe them out? Because they only have a few people that can hurt us. I say yes, I say yes. Why let them even set foot in my village? Okay, that was not the best roll. That's three kills, and we can choose to take away the blues. So even though they could hit us back with three units, only one of them can actually shoot. Sorry, Army 1, you just have no luck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it hurts. It hurts. I'll leave them right there. And remember, they can't go that way. That to village is already out of place. So y'all are dead. Oh my gosh, I didn't realize I even had this many weapons. Let's stow some of these. That's my second action. My third action. I mean, gosh, I don't even know. Let's see. Yeah, sure. Let's stow the other weapon Ooh, with a sharpshooter. That's just like a free uh, two action ambush. I could just pull these both out for one action and then shoot with the second. So not buying anything. And yeah, I think this is the death knell for the French. They only have four cards after this. They're adding two sappers and a regular unit. What? And they don't even move this turn? Come on, wusses. And remember, we're still building Army 2 because Army 1 is still deployed, although not for long. Which means, gosh, even if Army 2 did deploy, they would have like almost all their guys being useless sappers because I didn't build any defenses. All right, so over to Player 1 before the battle. Let's play Fatma, move her to help Player 2. And blip, there she is. Y'all are not getting in there. And geez, what else to do? I can definitely buy a weapon. It seems like that's probably my best option. So sure, let's go ahead and put my elderly man into one of my villages that has units in it. Doesn't matter too much. We'll go here and get us a third reroll. And that leaves you with six influence and a tool. Another weapon, not that I think we'll need it. And player two, what are you going to do before you massacre these guys? There's no point in me doing an ambush. They'll just die on their own. Ooh, but I will play Omar. Bring them all the way back from player one's village in here. Wow, we will have three sharpshooter shots. We'll probably destroy army one before it even gets to roll. And oh my gosh. You know, here, let's get another sharpshooter. Why not? I'm going to spend one action to pull back these two cards. Another one to pull back both of those. Have the food, have the weapon, clearly have the uh, weapon power. And that is the last sharpshooter we can purchase. So no more units are going to enter the game for us. 
I mean, gosh, it's totally overkill, but sure. <laughs> there you go. And French army, only four cards left. I think they're just done. Move all armies one additional time. They're not even spawning anybody. Y'all are sad. So here they come. They really think they're going to win. Look at their three units. And then before they even get near the village, I have the leader and three sharpshooters. Oh, wow. I actually missed uh, with one of them. Okay, so I think we still have to have one regular round of combat before they uh, run away. The sapper should retreat immediately, but they don't know any better. So, boom, army one is wiped out. And I think we can call it there. I don't think they'll have enough time. I mean, let's see. Okay, they would spawn three units into army one with that card. They would spawn three more units in there and put them on the board with that card. And then they would move once. I mean, that is all she wrote. Certainly uh, a different historical story here for Algeria's defense. The French had no chance. So now hang on if you want to hear my thoughts on the game so far. So first of all, the deck building. This reminds me a lot of something like Undaunted, where it's not a deck builder in the traditional sense, in that like you're seeing different cards and setting up varied combos. The cards out here are always going to be the same. You always have the Mujahideen and the Sharpshooters, wherever they are, and these other cards. You always start with the same starter deck. So you're not going to really see interesting combos. And honestly, these same cards do the same things every game. You got to get some food. You got to get some tools or a market. You got to get some weapons to do ambushes, some Mujahideen and Sharpshooters to build your armies. If you got a lot of stuff, you can buy some defenses. But that's basically what the game's got to offer. Not necessarily a bad thing, but don't come into this when you hear the word deck builder and think variety and combos. That's not really going to happen here. But what I think is really cool and what I really like is this idea of placing cards under villages. First of all, it greatly mitigates the luck because if I draw the cards I need for an ambush or if I draw the cards I need to buy a specific card, but at the wrong order, I can put them under for a future turn and just pull them out as an action. So I think this works great. I also like the fact that it kind of gives you a way to call your deck in whatever way you want. So this is a nice mechanic giving you way more control over your deck than the average deck builder. I also think combat is pretty straightforward and fun. Now it does have a CRT table, but as you can see, it's pretty simple and the different colored dice correspond to the units. Now, of course, it would be awesome if they had unique dice that just had the hit numbers right on there so you wouldn't have to reference this. But I imagine having that many custom dice would be ridiculously expensive. So I absolutely don't expect them to do that, but it would be nice. But either way, the combat is not that tough to run. Uh, as you saw, this game, this playthrough, it kind of was a little too easy on my part, but I have seen some much more desperate combats and that can be exciting. Although speaking of desperation, that plays into one of my main concerns with the game right now, and that's the balance, because I've had some games that were blowouts like this one, completely destroyed the French here, didn't have much tension at the end at all, I literally just skipped the last three rounds with no problem. But then on the other hand, I've had games where the army went the exact wrong way and bypassed most of your units and you had to suddenly scramble and players were eliminated early and then I lost after like five turns. Now, maybe these are just unusual experiences and the playtesting doesn't usually go that way, but I'm definitely concerned that sometimes the game will be too easy and sometimes it'll be way too quick. And especially with the game having player elimination, the idea that one out of four players or one out of three players could be gone after like three or four turns because you got the wrong French card draws or your dice went badly and they just kind of be sitting and watching the game suggests that they run the French but there's not really much to do there I'm not sure I love that design decision I'm not sure how they could do it differently I'm not sure how the other players could take a turn not a problem if you're going to play solo or multi-handed like I did here but definitely a concern about how they kind of have player elimination and the game can be over for some players so suddenly so there you go. That is the Red Burn News. Check it out on Kickstarter. I should have a link in the video description. I'm not sure about the randomness. I'm not sure about the player elimination, but the game does have nice tension when things play out. Don't come in expecting great combos in deck building. It's really more about deck management, but the way you handle your cards in the villages is really cool. Hope you enjoyed the video and we will see you at the next stop.